classification is on the bluehead chub. The scientific name of this species is Nocoma leptocephalus, and the classification will be identified briefly. They're in the kingdom Animalia, phylum Chordata, and their subphylum is Vertebrata, which is we, what we have been studying in this class, Vertebrate Natural History. Their class is Actinopterygii. Um, their order is Cypriniformes, family Cyprinidae. They're in the genus with other chubs, Nocomus, and their specific epithet is Leptocephalus. So the species is Nocomus leptocephalus, the bluehead chub. These fish are really unique in a couple of external features. They have a stocky body with a large head. Their sides are olive to brown, and they have fins that are tinted orange. You can really see this tint on the dorsal and caudal fins. Breeding males are the most characteristic um, and how this species got their name. So breeding males exhibit characteristic blue heads like the one shown in this picture. They also often have tubercles on the tops and fronts of their heads during mating. The adult length is 70 to 160 millimeters, and this is for males. Females are actually going to be a lot, a little bit bigger than males, um, and they're not going to exhibit this blue head. They're going to look more like a creek chub, which is a different species in the same genus. They will mo be more olive to brown color over their whole body. Their habitat is in fresh water. They're found in cool to warm headwaters and small to medium creeks. They're usually in clear waters um, or sometimes generally turbid. Their substrate is very important. It's highly varied from bedrock to sand and silt with some gravel. Um, this will be highlighted shortly, but their substrate is really important for spawning and the nest that they build. Their reproduction and life cycle is one of the most unique characteristics of this species and of other species in the same genus. Their spawning usually occurs in the spring um, and they do exhibit external fertilization, which is where the female releases the eggs into the water. The male releases sperm over top of them and it fertilizes them. What's really unique is that after fertilization, males will actually guard the eggs until they hatch. Usually we see females guarding the young or the nests um, but in this species, the males will guard the nest. Um, so they actually construct these large piles of gravel called chub nests. So as you can see in the picture, they will actually carry different stones or pieces of rock, and this, whatever substrate they're on, into these um, piles to create their nests. These definitely cost energy to make. And a male chub can carry over 7,000 stones, often as large as his head, to his nest site to make his nest. What's really important is that other minnow species actually spawn on these nests, so they're very important to the ecosystem as a whole, not just this species in general. Their diet consists of insects and plant material, mostly algae, so larval fish will begin eating copepods, which are really small invertebrate, and they also eat small aquatic insect, lar insect larvae, and then they will move to sometimes terrestrial invertebrates and also aquatic invertebrates. Streams that receive a lot of nutrients from runoff often have large populations of bluehead chub just from these, these nutrients that come from this. This can also be a pollutant issue, um, but sometimes this does draw in different species within the genus, especially bluehead chubs. Their range can be seen in a picture here. As you can see, a lot of their range is within North Carolina. Um, so they're common in most clear Atlantic streams and in Gulf streams, but they're a keystone species in North Carolina and can be found in many creeks and streams here, which is really important to our ecosystems and watersheds. Just some interesting facts. It's believed that the bluehead chub is the first vertebrate species to be scientifically described from North Carolina. There are definitely different chub species in this genus, Nocomus, but the bluehead chub was the first to be described, which I think is really interesting. They're least listed as least common, which is great in the view of the large extent of their occurrence. They have a fairly great number of subpopulations and a good population size, and they lack major threats such as predators. Um, of course, they do have predators like other larger fish, but they are in all are not declining and doing well. Some pictures here of the bluehead chub and of chub nests and some other minnows using these nests.
Thank you so much for watching. My name is Haley Gamble, and I am in FW373, which is Vertebrate Natural History at North Carolina State University.